and you're gonna be able to see the screen. I think it's only gonna get worse. That's a pretty cool setup. This is from Geo Ballistics. You've got the app and this weather station. So that's all real-time data. And see, there we get. And then it'll drop off. And when it drops off, it's still at three miles an hour steady. That's as low as it gets. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. That was just a glimpse at the crazy wind that we had to deal with as shooters at the Woody's Springtime Precision Rifle Series match held near Apex, North Carolina. And it made it a really, really challenging match for me because I just, I never had experience shooting in wind like that. But it also made it the perfect conditions for me to test out the Ballistics Arc Ballistics Calculator app from Geo Ballistics and the weather flow weather meter that it pairs with. That day, I was able to do everything I needed to do with the free app. And it's available in both iPhone and Android versions. But for $15 more, you can upgrade to an even more powerful version that I think has some really cool map-based features that'll be most helpful for hunters. And that's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. I'm gonna start by demonstrating the free version that I loaded on my wife's iPhone 6 Plus so you can see exactly how powerful its features are. When you first open the app, you need to allow it to have access to location in order to use some of its best features. Then it gives you a help screen, which you can access at any time via the menu button. It shows that the orange labels double as buttons for acquiring your latitude and longitude as well as shot bearing and shot angle. Because some of the features depend on knowing your location, I always tap one of the location buttons as soon as I open the app. However, I'm gonna keep the default values for this demo so I don't end up with stalkers trying to live in my basement. Sample rifle and range cars come preloaded in the app, which result in this chart that has your holds in chosen increments up to the range set by the user. The first thing I want to do is to create a new rifle card based upon my Bergara LRP Elite 6.5 Creedmoor shooting prime ammunition 130 grain match ammunition. So I don't mix it up with other loads of rifles, I put the rifle and ammo names in the description. Next, I need to enter the bullet data. Data for all the most popular bullets can be found via the lookup button. If you don't know what bullet your ammo uses, contact the manufacturer because none of this works unless you have the correct ballistic data entered into your rifle card. You can also enter your bullet data manually, which is what I'm going to do for this ammo. Prime provides all the data you need on the box. I'm going to use a G7 model, so I enter the G7 ballistic coefficient. Next, I need to enter my rifle data. Knowing your sight height is also critical for ballistic calculations, so take your time with this. Sight height is the distance between the center of your bore and the center of your optic, which in this case is about 2 and 1 8 inches. I'll be zeroing at 100 yards, though you can use whatever zero you want because the app will give you the correct holds regardless. Elevation and windage offset would be used if you wanted to keep your rifle zeroed for one load, but use different loads. You also need to know your barrel's twist rate, which is usually found on the manufacturer's website for your rifle. I've previously chronographed this load through my Dead Air Sandman L silencer and got a nicely rounded 2835 feet per second average velocity. For now, I'm going to leave the atmospheric set to match current, but I could set it to use recorded on the day I zero the rifle. Geoballistics gives you the option of setting up some thresholds most useful in hunting, including vital size, energy threshold, and velocity threshold. These aren't so important to this match load though, but I'll enter some values anyway so you know where they came from later in the video. The app also provides a way to true your data without the use of a chronograph. You would only need this if you find that the holds the app gives you don't correspond to performance in the field, and you really need access to at least an 800 yard range to make this work. Since I've yet to have any issues with the standard holds, I'm not going to use this feature in this video. Every load needs its own rifle card, though the free app only allows you to keep one custom card at a time. If you plan to switch loads frequently or don't want to re-enter data, you need to upgrade to the paid version of the app. After selecting the rifle card, the data is loaded on your hold chart right Right away. The gray line represents the maximum range where I can hit the animal's vitals without changing my hold. The red line represents the maximum range where the bullet has the kinetic energy threshold that I set. And the yellow line represents the maximum range where the bullet has the velocity threshold that I set. 
This gets really cool when using the map mode in the paid app that I'll demonstrate later. This all looks great, but I still need to update the atmospherics and shot position data. The app can pull real-time atmospherics from nearby weather stations, and once you select the station of your preference, the data is loaded for you to preview. Wind speed and direction are separated from the other atmospherics because you can't count on that applying to your shooting position. Clicking Use loads the pressure, temperature, and density data into the calculator, at which point I'd recommend estimating the wind speed and using your phone's compass to get an accurate heading, then entering the values into the app. Click Done, and now the chart reflects the atmospherics. The chart can be used to give you very precise holds by entering exact ranges. You can also adjust the increments to any value you like, though 50 or 100 yards is usually the most sensible. I'll demonstrate getting the shot bearing and angle at the shooting range, but we're going to assume that the data is correct for now. Clicking save will save your chart as a photo in your photo app. Of course, all of the units that I used are user selectable via the settings found in the menu. Holds can be given in mils, MOA, even inches of holdover. Imperial and metric units for range, velocity, and atmospherics are also available. What really surprised me was that the free version will link up with either the weather flow wind meter or the weather station that I'm using here. The polycarbonate case is extremely durable, meaning that you can toss this into your range bag and not worry about it getting damaged unless you do something really stupid. The transparent lid also means that you can see your weather station is actually in the case without opening it. Weatherflow supplies a lanyard loop as well as a headphone jack stem which screw into the bottom of the weather station using the same threads as a tripod mount. This means that you have three different ways of mounting the meter in addition to simply holding it in your hand. The hardware communicates via Bluetooth though the pairing is done in the app itself and not through your Bluetooth settings on your phone. Your Bluetooth antenna must be on, of course, then pressing the button on the weather station will automatically pair the app to the hardware. Atmospherics are then displayed real-time on the screen, and taking a sample will allow you to load the data into the calculator. The settings button allows you to update the firmware on the weather station as well as calibrate its compass. You can also select between using the meter's compass or the device's compass for your wind readings. I choose to use the device because that's what's used for the shot bearing anyway, and I feel better using one compass for both readings instead of two which might not have the same exact calibration. Selecting use once again loads the data into the calculator, and now we have a complete chart of holds for this imaginary shooting position. Let's now go out to the range to show how I use the system in the field. The first thing I do after opening the Ballistic Sark app is to get my latitude and longitude. Then I make sure to have the correct rifle and load selected before measuring the atmospherics. Ordinarily, I wouldn't take a wind reading under a cover like this, but the sun was just too bright for my camera to pick up the screen on my phone unless I was in a shadow. Regardless, this does show the process I use to get the environmental data including wind speed and bearing. After pairing the Weatherflow weather station with the Ballistics Arc app, current sensor readings for atmospherics and wind data appear on the screen. However, I have to take a sample before I can load that data into the ballistics calculator. Since I'm using the phone to indicate bearing, I have to make sure both the phone and the weather station are pointed directly into the wind, which is actually not that hard to do. One tap of the Take Sample button starts your sample, and the second tap stops it. How long of a sample you take depends upon what you're trying to read. However, I like to take short samples of 10 seconds or less under wind speed I think I'm most likely to pull the trigger. Longer samples will give you an average value that will actually be wrong most of the time during gusty wind because it'll give you too much of a hold when the wind dies down and too little of a hold when the wind gusts up. Experience will be your guide on this, so be sure to try a bunch of different sampling methods until you find the one that matches your own shot timing. The most recent sample is at the top of the sample list and pressing use loads the data into the calculator. Now we're getting close to shoot. Okay, so what we have left to do is to get the shot bearing and the shot angle. Shot bearing is pretty easy. You just want to line your phone up straight between where your position shooting is and the target. And this is actually, sometimes it's a little bit easier done standing up, but then you just tap the shot bearing button and I've entered that it's nine degrees and then the next thing is the shot angle which is a little trickier because the buttons are a little small so you want to make sure you get your finger right over the shot angle button you're gonna use the face of your phone hit it and now I got the shot angle so now that I have that I should have my holds and I've got 100 yard holds from from 0 to 500 
And I also, since I manually entered my range as 550, it also gives me my 550 range, which is what I'm going to shoot. So it gives me a 3, three mil hold up and a 0.3 right hold. Three mils up and 0.3 right hold. Nailed it. Just like that. That look was me realizing I forgot to set up my AT and Binox to record the target. But I did get the next nine shots on video. The main thing you'll notice is that the two misses occurred when the wind suddenly shifted from left to right. This goes to show that as good as the geoballistics calculation is, it only works when the data entered matches what you're experiencing when you pull the trigger. It doesn't make the actual shot any easier because you still need to read the wind and know when to time your shot or adjust your hold on the fly. I also want to point out how great the new Magpul AICS 10 round mag is working. This is the first time I used them and they were easier to load and smoother cycling than any other mag I have. <laughs> nice. This field is where I saw the biggest buck I ever saw in person in real life. It was a huge 14 point typical rack super tall, super wide, and it ran right across this field, and there's actually a fence that we can't see because of the tall grass, just right up over the hill, four foot high, jumped right over, of course deer do that all the time. We are gonna pretend that I have permission to hunt this field from the tree that I'm parked under right now, so I can show you how to use the paid Ballistics Arc app to set up your kill zones. This is where the paid app gets really cool. First thing we're going to do is open it. I've got this on my phone. We want to load up. We're going to pretend I'm hunting this field here. So I'm going to go to a hunting round. That's a 308 Federal Fusion round out of a Wil my Wilson Combat Super Sniper. Now that I got that loaded, I'm going to go to the map. And that little blue icon there is, is where I'm located. You can actually switch between satellite view, a hybrid view that has the actual roads, regular map view, whichever is easiest for you to find the different landmarks, but we're just going to use regular map view. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to center the map on my current location. And oh, another feature is if I tap this, this automatically orients the map for uh, the, the direction that the phone is facing. But that's going to spin around too much while, while I'm doing this. But you can, you can zoom, you can reorient uh, manually like most maps. But first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop a pin that says, I'm the shooter. This is my tree stand. Next thing we're going to do is pick a target. Well, let's pretend that anywhere in this field I could end up having a deer. But I want to see what's, how far can I reach out. So I've already lazed this group of trees out here. And, and uh, I'm going to drop a target pin right there. And now you can see it's painted this color, colored line with a couple different sections to it. So this solid black line takes me to my maximum vital range. In 200.8 yards, I can have one hold and hit anywhere in a six inch vital that I defined for this load. The next black dotted line takes me out to my velocity threshold, which I set at 1800 feet per second. That's about the minimum velocity that that bullet will reliably expand. So I want to know how far that is. The yellow takes me out to the energy threshold. At 607 yards is where the kinetic energy drops below 1,000 foot-pounds. And then of course, the target out there, the information for the target is 609.2 yards. And that's, I laser it at 694 yards. And that gives me my hold at all of those. But I could also build a chart. Hard to push when I'm wrapping my hands around a There we go, and there's the chart. And the cool thing about the chart right now, get that focused, is I've got 100 yard holds. I, I have that set up uh, in the settings, but that gray right there, that's my point blank range or, or max vital range, and those are my holds. The yellow shows me what my maximum velocity uh, yardage is, and this is my maximum kinetic energy yardage, all right there. And of course, 
you can go back and, and you don't even need to um, erase this, but you say, okay, well, I can see a deer. It's by that fence line and that group of trees right there. It's just on the inside of the fence line. Boom, how far is that? And um, it's 286, 88 yards and gives me my holes. Just like that and everything in between. It says, you know, I've got to use a real hold. I'm not going to do point blank, but, but that's no big deal. You can either dial that because, of course, you can set that to MOA, not just mills, um, or you just do holdovers with the kind of reticles that I use. And anytime you want, you can delete and start over. That is a really slick feature, and it can save you having to invest in a laser rangefinder if you have, you know, good understanding of what you see on the map and how it relates to landmarks that you can see with your eyes. Geoballistics claims that their free app is the most powerful free ballistics calculator that's available. And after using it for about two months, I believe them, especially since that free app pairs with this $85 weather meter from Weatherflow. And that's, that's a fraction of the cost of the most popular combination ballistic calculators and weather meters out there. Of course, you do need to upgrade to the $15 paid version to be able to load multiple rifles and multiple loads in at a time. But I, I'm blown away with the amount of features that you can get. And I think most shooters are going to be fine just with the free app. You don't necessarily need the full function of a weather meter. If you can estimate wind and you could just use the compass app on your phone to get the heading, you're going to be able to get the holes that you need just with the, the free app. Of course, the weather flow, weather meter, and the app pair excellently together. They're a very, very good match. And if you're starting from scratch, I recommend this pairing. But future updates of the paid app will allow you to pair the app with other manufacturers' brands of weather meters that are Bluetooth enabled. And the weather flow weather meter is going to be pairable with other developers' versions of ballistic calculators coming very soon. So these aren't married together, but as I said, I think they make a really, really good match. And so for about $100, you get the full power of, like I said, the, the most popular combination weather meters and ballistic calculators that are out there at about one-fifth, one-sixth the price. And uh, at that competition, I wasn't the only one using one. Everybody loved it. Everybody loved the idea. If you want to learn more about how to download the free app, be sure to click the link in the video description below. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. You can see the links right here. And be sure to click here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.